All right, so transformations of trig functions part two. What we're looking at today is just making equations and mainly, but we're gonna start with just graphing one again. <coughs> so if I was looking at this graph, we start with our amplitude. We always get that right at the start, so our amplitude is two. Okay, our period is gonna be two pi divided by our k value, which is two pi divided by two is just pi. Our phase shift right here, we're going to be going left uh, pi by 2. And vertical translation, we're going down 3. Okay, so looking at this graph, if we're going down 3 and our amplitude is 2, that means we need to have a minimum of 5 on our scales. So I think if we count yeah, let's just see if we count every other square here by one. Yeah, we'll get down to negative five. So we can go up like that. Now remember, I said to have a good scale when you're doing this. A couple people asked me the other day, they said my graph looks different than yours, Mr. Shaw. Why is that? And I said it was because of your scale. If we need to get a scale of pi as our values and we're moving pi by two, I need to at least count in pi by twos. So I can count. Um, pi by 4, for instance, would work for this. So if I count every other square as pi by 4, pi by 4, pi by 2, um, 3 pi by 4, pi, and so on. And then negatives, I'm just going to skip uh, one here. So we'll have negative pi by 2. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, negative pi. It'll just look a little bit cleaner. So there's our scale. Now we're moving left pi by 2 and down 3. So our starting value will be right there. Now our period is pi, so that means I'm going to go pi to the right. Put a point. Now this is what I was talking about the other day, that now if my scale is good, I can just count squares. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 squares. So half of 8 is 4. So I should have a value. This is a sine graph. I should have a value right in the middle at 4 squares. Now if I half that, and the first one, because it's a positive right here, I'm going to go up in my first quarter. So I'm going to go half of my first quarter here. And I'm going to go up by my amplitude. So if I go up by my amplitude there, I'm going up 2. And then here I'm going to go half of the other one and go down to. And then there's my graph. And I could keep graphing it if I wanted to, just counting by twos and moving along. Connect the dots. Throw some arrows on the end. And you're done. Okay, pretty simple. All right, so finding the equation. When we're finding the equation, we kind of need to work through it in um, a logical way. This one, we've got a maximum value of 12 and a minimum value of negative 2. Well, my amplitude is going to be the top to the middle. So it might be useful to find out what my vertical translation is first. Now, my vertical translation has got to be the middle of these two values. So if I add them together, and divide by 2, that should give me the middle. So that gives me 5. Now, if I'm going to go from the middle, which is my vertical translation, to my maximum, that's going to give me my amplitude. Or from the middle to my minimum, that's going to give me my amplitude. So, if I do 12 minus 5 from the top to the middle, that'll give me my amplitude. So that's 7. Those two are nice and easy. Now it says the phase shift. That's the easiest one of all. So that's just left. Uh, pi by 6. Now my k value is a little bit more difficult here. So what we know is that our period, and I'm going to change that to equals 2 pi over k. Scratch that. So if my period equals 2 pi over k, I know my period is pi by 2. I know that equals 2 pi over k. 
Uh, if I cross multiply, I'm going to get k times pi equals 4 pi. And then that's going to say that k equals 4. So now I've got my equation, my amplitude, my k value, my translation, and my vertical translation. So we're going to get something like f of x equals 7 sine 4 x plus, because remember it's going the other way, pi by 6. Let's just throw a square bracket around there. And then plus 5. All right, so we've got our function. Let's try the next one. The next one's a little bit more difficult because it only really gives us two values. Okay, it gives us a maximum, gives us a minimum. Okay, it says it's a subs subsequent minimum, so it means the next minimum. Now, when I'm working through a question like this, a lot of the times I, again, if I know it's max to min, I'm going to start with my vertical translation. Um, I'm going to do 6 plus negative 2 over 2. Well, that's going to be 2. 6 plus negative 2 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. Okay, that's also going to give me my amplitude, because I'm going to get 6 minus 2, and I'm going to get 4. Okay, so I've got my amplitude, got my vertical translation. For the next part, I like to just do a little sketch. Okay, so if I'm doing this sketch, <coughs> what I'm going to do, start with my maximum. So here's my graph. I know it's at pi and 6. So I've got pi, 6. And I know that it's got to go something like this. Okay? It's going to go down to my minimum, which is 5 pi. 5 pi. And what is that, negative 2? So 5 pi and negative 2. Now, from here, from the maximum to the minimum, it's actually half of my graph. Because for this graph to finish, I'd have to come back up to my maximum. There's one period. So if my period is from pi to double what it would be from 5 pi, so what I can do is actually find my period by doing 5 pi minus pi times 2. Okay? That's going to be 4 pi times 2, which is 8 pi. Well, I know that my k value then is 2 pi times 4, or my k value has actually got to be 1 quarter. Oh, not 1 half, 1 quarter. Oh, let's fix that. 1 quarter. Because we know that we're dividing 2 pi by our k value to get our period. Okay, so k is a quarter. Now, <clears throat> our phase shift is going to be, depending on where you look at it, it's either going to be here or here. If you use this first one, you have to have a negative value because the sine function is going to be starting going down. If you use the second one, you're going to have a positive value. This one is halfway between, sorry, this one here is halfway between pi and 5 pi. So this value would be 3 pi, and it's on our vertical translation in 2. This one would be 5 pi plus, or the next one, sorry, would be 5 pi plus 2 pi. So this would be 7 pi and 2. You can choose either one to make your equation. I'm going to choose this first one. So for my equation, I'd end up getting something like this. f of x equals my amplitude, which was 4, sine, square bracket, we've got a quarter for a k value, we've moved pi by, or sorry, 3 pi, not pi by 3, 3 pi to the right, close that off, and then we've moved up 2. Okay. All right, the next one again. This one I would strictly just draw it. Okay, we've got a bunch of information. So, if I were to make this sketch here, our 
first maximum is at pi by 3 and 4. Pi by 3 and 4. We've got a period of 2 pi by 3. So what that means is that 2 pi by 3 plus pi by 3, well, that's going to be pi and 4. Okay, there's going to be the end of my graph. It says a vertical translation of negative 2. So that means my starting line is kind of right there at negative 2. So it's going to look something like that. Okay, obviously, the bottom is going to dip down a little bit lower. We know this is negative 2. We know our period is 2 pi by 3. So that means our k value is just 3. Because 2 pi over k is our period. Our amplitude we need to now find. If we've got a vertical translation of negative 2 and a maximum of 4, well, 4 minus negative 2, I'm going to give that to be 6. Now we just need to find the phase shift. Well, <clears throat> we need to go, it would be halfway between these two values, would be the middle right here. So we need to go a quarter of the way to get right here. Sorry that my graph isn't drawn to scale here, but I wanted to fit it all in. A quarter of that value would be, well, half of it would go to 2 pi by 3. <coughs> and what are we going to be at? We're going down 6 from negative 2, so negative 8. And halfway between pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3, this value right here would be pi by 2. And that's going to be at negative 2. We move down. So that means my phase shift, if I want to use the negative value of the sine function, would be right. And what is it? Pi by 2. Okay, and it says the function is equal to or greater than zero, so we can't go into the negative values. So then therefore my equation, f at x equals, and we're starting going down here, so we have to have negative 6, sine, square bracket, 3x minus pi by 2, close all my brackets, subtract 2. I know that's small and kind of at the side, but it's still there. All right, I'm going to let you try the last question on your own. I've shown you all of them. The last one I think is easier than the last two that we've just done, but it still does require you to do a lot of information. Okay, look for things that you know, like the amplitude, the vertical translation, the phase shift. Those ones are easy in this one. The period's the hardest one, but it's not all that bad, and you use the period to find your k value. All right, and... We will talk about it on Monday.